Welcome. We have here a circular capacitor where we have a current coming into the capacitor, a current coming out of the capacitor, but in between the plates there is no current, there's no change of charge, but there is an electric field. So we can look at it from the side view, or we can look at it from this face view where we have some electric field in our circular capacitor, and then we are going to make an assumption, a model, that we are going to say the electric field is going to be constant inside of the capacitor. So we're going to say for r less than the radius of the capacitor, and we're going to say it's zero for radiuses outside the radius of the capacitor. This is obviously making things a lot easier than it normally would be, but it's a pretty good example and we don't want to get too ugly for just showing Maxwell's correction. So we know here that we're going to have some sort of a magnetic field generated around these wires. And we know that because of Ampere's law. So our Ampere's law says that the path integral of b dot ds is equal to mu naught times the current going through. But here we have no current going through, and we want to think about what should happen during this part. So then we also add to this the Maxwell correction, where we say we have a second term of mu naught times epsilon naught times the derivative with respect to time of the integral of E dot dA. So this is going to be similar to that magnetic flux, but now it's in an electric flux. Right, with induction we had that a right, changing magnetic flux induced a electric field. Now we're saying a changing electric flux induces a magnetic field. So we've already done normal Ampere's law plenty of times. Let's do it for here. So we know that our Ampere's law should have the form of some magnetic fields going tangent. So we are going to build two loops, one with the radius larger than the circumference or the radius of the capacitor, and one with the radius smaller. So in this case then, current through is zero. So let's look at the integral b dot ds case. If we think that our magnetic field is going to be tangent, that is we believe our magnetic field is going to look like this, then this b dot ds is always going to be parallel to b, and since we have a circle, it will just be b in the tangential direction times 2 pi r. For our mu naught epsilon naught dt, d dt of integral e dot dA, well, this is now the electric flux that we contain. So we can write, branch this off into two sections. So we have four inside our integral of e dot dA is going to be the integral from zero to r of my electric field inside e of t and the dA being two pi r dr, which we've seen plenty of times this semester. And then for outside, we would have that our integral e dot dA is going to be up until we get to the end of the capacitor, so zero to capital RC, this e of t two pi r dr, plus then from the radius of the capacitor to wherever we are going, our radius of our circle, r, we are going to have a electric field of zero, two pi r dr. Since we have a definite integral of zero, this just becomes zero. So then for our inside, this flux becomes e of t times pi r squared. For outside, our flux becomes e of t 
times pi radius of the capacitor squared. So now we can bring it all together. We know b dot ds and we know this so that we can say then for the inside we have our b dot ds term, b tangential times 2 pi r is equal to mu naught epsilon naught times the time derivative of e of t times pi r squared and then our pi r squared, the radius of this imaginary loop is not going to change. So it's only the derivative of the electric field. So we have bt 2 pi r equals epsilon naught mu naught de of t dt pi r squared. So we can do a little bit of cancellation, a little bit of clearing things out, the pi and the r, and we get that our magnetic field is going to be mu naught epsilon naught r over 2 times dE of t dt. And for our outside, well, we still have b of t times 2 pi r. And now we just have this, instead of this little r squared for a variable r, we now have the capital R squared for a constant R. So mu naught, epsilon naught, the time derivative of all of this, e of t pi capital R c squared. So then just the pi's cancel out. As they are constant, we can pull this capital R c out of the derivative as well because it is constant. And so we're going to get mu naught, epsilon naught, R sub c squared over 2r times dE of t dt. And so we would get then is if we were to look at the magnetic field as a function of radius, as a function of how far we are away from the capacitor, it is a function of radius to the first power on top up here, a function of radius to the first power on bottom down here. So we would get a nice straight line until capital RC and then a 1 over R relationship after that. Well, we expect this if this was a constant current density to get something very similar uh, with this. So we have here a way to use the Ampere's Law Maxwell correction to find a changing magnetic field if we are given a changing electric field.